Good morning, welcome to the Oregon Fly Fishing Blog. Um, we're going to tie a bass popper. It's springtime. And we got a, a Gamagatsu one Ot B10S Stinger. I've got some uh, UTC 140 to start. And what I'm going to do is build the weed guard on this fly. So I'm just going to lay this down. I have some Rio LA Hard alloy hard saltwater tippet in 20 pound and I take two pieces of that it has a natural curvature to it the stuff is stiff and that's the whole reason we use it you want something stiff enough that it keeps the weeds out of there but soft enough that it so what I'm going to do is wrap this cover it up real well and then normally what I would do is do a bunch of these at one time and put some um, Zappa Gap. I use the brushable. I like to use this Vivas 10 aught or 8 aught. Now I have foam all pre cut. I'm going to have a little butt section here that I will tie in first. And the reason I do this is it's a prop, it keeps the tail from wrapping on the body. Then I'm going to take some purple haze. About what is the formula for that foam? I just take that foam and I cut it like a little beetle butt end and I want it to extend past the bend. How wide is it? It's um, 3 8 okay. on this size of hook. So I've got some purple haze. I'm going to tie this in. This is some added flash. Don't have to put it in. I like it. I've got Magnum Strip Rabbit. And I will tie that in. Make sure you get your thread to go right back up to the base of where you got your... We have to lay foam. And you cut your foam about half inch widths. And first of all, we're going to take a, a narrower strip, which is about 3 8 and that's going to be the underbelly of this fly. And I will tie this in so that it the foam comes up and leaves me probably at least a quarter inch at the front. Make sure you get this snugged all the way down at the base of your rabbit tail. Otherwise you'll have a big gap. And you don't have to wrap this stuff real tight and I do caution you when you're working with foam, uh, this stuff does not tolerate a tight thread wrap. So if you're having problems with slippage of material and stuff, lay a little zap gap in between steps. Um, generally that's not necessary. Okay, so I've got uh, purple foam. And this is cut in a one half inch block. I generally cut my foam on the width of the foam. I'll cut it this way in half inch pieces and then I'm going to add black this is all meantime bulking up quite a bit which is fine this is all buoyancy don't wrap too tightly on your on your foam it will cut it it's very very sensitive to that next I'm going to tie in a black schloppen feather worry that there's a gap because when you pull the foam around it's gonna even all that out. Next I'm gonna put a purple schloppen feather in there. This looks like a mess right now but it will even out. And then I'm gonna use some life flex in purple. I'm gonna take um, two strands, lay them in the middle just in front of that purple, pull them back so they lay back out to the side. Oxen doesn't get to fish all of them that first year they will go to pot on you over time. Okay so I've got my rubber leg. Next I need one more black schloppen feather. I'll tie this in. Okay. And then I'll just take this schlock, and you'll see why here in a minute. OK. 
Okay, so I'm going to tie that off. What we're going to do is take and lay these materials around. I'm going to turn my vise over, bring this bottom foam forward first, and see it starts to flatten that material out and trap it, and it gives a nice big belly on the bottom of this fly. Let's make sure we've got everything secured there pretty well. We do. So now I'm going to take this and trim it. Now I'm going to pull over this top foam, make sure my rubber legs get splayed and my schloppen. I'm going to pull the black over first. Pull it semi-taut, but if you pull it too tight and cinch your thread down, again, you will cut into your thread so or into your foam. And then I'll take the purple, bring it over next. Again, a few more wraps, not real tight. And then I want to figure out the length I'm going to make the lip that sticks out here. So I'm going to take this foam on the purple and cut it to length, make sure it's nice and even. So I've got that cut, and it's sticking out three-eighths maybe. Then I'll take the black foam, fold it over it, cinch it down. So now I've got this really nice big lip out there to gurgle and make noise. And then I'm just going to trim this piece back. Okay. Pull my thread around front. Make some wraps there. Then I'm going to take this weed guard next. I'm going to try to do this so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to run it through the eye of the hook and get it set. Now you can see just about where I have it. I want that weed guard to be able basically to be a width of my scissors off of the point of the hook. It's about what I set it at. So I've got that set. I'm going to make some wraps. Check it, tighten it up, loosen it. And then next I'll take some wax and wax up my thread real good to get it to grab this mono because this is kind of touchy when I'm trying to get this to seat. So I'm going to pull this foam back, get that on there real good, and I'm going to cut this mono about a sixteenth of an inch. And I'll take my thumbnail, push it right back in there, and hold it in place, and then bring my thread over the top of my thumbnail. Pull it down. You're propping the foam up a bit there. Though. I am propping the foam up and I am securing the weed guard both, yeah. So. And still leaving enough to thread heavy mono. Yes. Yeah, I can still get 20 pound tip it through that eye of that hook easily. So now I'm going to put a whip finish on this. Zap a gap everything. Which includes the head. And then I'll put a little bit on the seam of the foam. And there you have my little foam popper. And I'll take these legs and, you know, trim them up so they're nice and even. I've got my weed guard there, and we've got the foam popper.